So hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for attending this talk. Uh, my name is Marcos Rojas, and I'm a C++ technical lead. Until the last week, I was working for the Department of Defense here in Spain. But that changed the last week, so I moved to, to the Systems as a senior innovation engineer. And um, well, I just grabbed this uh, Hawaiian shirt in order to pretend to be something much, someone much more important than I actually am, but it doesn't work anyway. Uh, let's start with the talk itself, so we can we can see the outline for for this talk, and we're going to cover the first uh, part of the talk. Will be based on on a PowerPoint presentation, the one that you are currently seeing, just to explain all the stuff, uh, so you can get introduced to the uh, to the topic that we are uh, introducing them today. Okay, then uh, I will give you a short uh, trip around uh, some demos, some, some demonstrations, just using uh, one of the modules that is being included within this uh, very first release of the, of the library. And after that, uh, and this is, uh, I, I will ask to, to you all to write down your questions during the talk because uh, it would be much better if we can use the final uh, part of the of the talk to 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 these kind of things to ask questions and possibly to answer your questions. Okay, in order not to not to interrupt and to get uh, not to get over time uh, during the presentation. Okay, so let's start. Okay, uh, I think it's uh, <laughs> it's something that we we are facing in a daily basis, right? So in 1969, uh, we as humans send people to the moon and back uh, using only a four kilobytes and one megahertz uh, microcontroller. Nowadays, uh, we are using extremely uh, powerful computers, but the software seems not to be running as fast as it should be. And, and this is one of the main topics we will be talking about and was one of the, uh, uh, the motivations that we have in order to build this library, which is called Hook, as, we, as I will explain in a little bit. Okay, let's talk a little bit. Uh, don't worry about that. It's just a, a very brief description, a little theory before getting into the stuff. Let's talk about the Moore's law, uh, which said that the speed and capability of computers can be expected to double every two years as a result of increases in the number of transistors a microchip can contain. Uh, mainly, this is saying that it was it was expected for the for the performance to be growing in an exponential uh, way through the time. So every two years, we could expect to have much powerful computers in order to execute our code. Okay, that's right. That was a really nice thing to read. A really nice thing to to have into a code, to keep into account while while writing the software. But uh, many. A few years ago, I was working for a financial company, just doing uh, uh, financial technical stuff, just writing. It was a quite simple uh, architecture. It was just uh, imagine that have a, uh, a server running uh, and it just accepts any number of information distributed along bytes in an opaque distribution, and then uses this information to transform it to some human readable information. At the end, it was just a collection of filters embedded within a server. The problem uh, arised that the, when we tried, when they tried to serve a large number of simultaneous connections and a lot of people just uh, querying for information at the same time, the, the system went down very easily. So uh, my business leader uh, said me this, uh, this is a true story quote, I, I swear about it. And he said that he was extremely, uh, uh, satisfied with the solution, even that it, it was not running at the, at the desired speed. Uh, the phrase was, don't care too much about how efficient your code, uh, your software is, because at the end you will always be able to improve the hardware to buy uh, uh, new hardware in order to make it run faster. Okay, so we said, we just, uh, we just, uh, we were looking to each other, so the software developers are saying, well, that's, that's, that's a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, tricky, okay? So now, uh, most semiconductor industry experts say that the Moore's Law will end around 2025. Okay, uh, so what does it mean? What does it mean? So it means that everything that we knew regarding the exponential growth 
uh, through the hardware in order to make our software uh, faster because it's running on a faster machine, it's not true anymore, okay? Uh, so we need to invest some time making better software and to write better code, okay? Well, the next thing, the, the next quote is that you're going to see is based on true story. So they are real. I just grabbed some articles from internet, from, from newspapers, and, and they are very reputed people. So I'm not talking about uh, people like me that are completely uh, uh, unknown. But they are they are really reputed people saying things. So let's start with this one. Java will be faster than C++. Okay, Kirk. Okay, got it. Got it. Uh, don't know why. Uh, well, I know why. I just read the article, and he was referring to the uh, to the Java capability of to recompile code very fast. Uh, that's because they are using a JPM, of course. Okay, got it. Java will be faster than C++. Let's continue. C++ is old. So many of its libraries, modules, and tutorials are out of date. It's up to you to find a solution that isn't just applicable, but modern as well. Okay, Ethan. Okay, Ethan. Got it. Got it. Okay, C++ is old. It's old, and its libraries are not very well documented. They are not modern. We are, we are using raw pointers and, and very low-level stuff, just manipulating bytes. Okay, got it. And the third one, the tooling and infrastructure around Rust is really phenomenal. I like the many compilers and ancillary utilities that programmers use to build C code. Okay, okay, got it. So uh, I, I think that most of the people that is attending right now know very well what uh, Rust is. It's a new language that is based on C. Uh, and that's right, okay, okay. They are claiming, uh, they are complaining about the uh, the tool chain regarding the, the C and C++ community. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That hurts, at least to me. I've been writing C++ code since I was uh, 16 years old, many, many time ago. You, you don't want to know. Uh, and that hurts. That hurts because I think that almost every single person right now attending this talk and this conference knows that uh, this is not true. This is, this is uh, our reputation. This is a, a reputation that we are carrying, we are bringing with us while working with C++, okay? But I would like to state that not all those, uh, those things that we saw before are false or are not true. Yes, they, they have somehow uh, some truth within them. Okay, so let's explain right now why we, why I'm, am I talking today here? Why I'm just giving a presentation today? Uh, who are we? I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of Kubica. As you can see, Kubica is a C++ open source group to bring high performance solutions. Awesome. That's that looks terrible, uh, terribly uh, awesome. It's it's okay. It's perfect. Yeah. Uh, high performance solutions, C++, open source, perfect. I, I would like to state that I'm not the only person uh, within Kubica. Uh, I'm just speaking on behalf of uh, the open source group, but there are more people involved in, into this uh, project that will hopefully uh, grow uh, a lot during the, the next months and next years. Okay. So what are we working on? This is what this is the, the key question today, okay, in this talk. So we have two main things, and apart from the fabulous logos that you are seeing right now, we have two things, they're very separated, but they are really attached to each other. The first one is a hook, which is the main subject of, of this talk, okay, and that's because I'm here right now with you all. It's a header only and cross-platform C++ library, especially designed for high performance and low resources consumption. That looks awesome. So it's, I know it's, it's, it's almost a perfect definition, right? Of, of what the library should be. It, it just have everything there. Okay, in theory, it looks great. Right. Let's see uh, in practice how, how good it is. And on the other hand, we have another, the, the other 50% of the work that we are, the time we are spending right now working on Kubica is Ku. Who is a C++ projects and packages manager tool especially designed for, but not limited to, header-only based artifacts. This, uh, th this is a pretty cool thing that we 
we were thinking about uh, several months ago while designing it and and i will give you more details about it but you can imagine uh, us having like a, a golang uh, or or rust cargo tool command line tool uh, to manage your C++ projects. Imagine that you are starting a project from the scratch and you want to write your main file and you uh, need for some dependencies and you want to grab them to download them, everything that is needed to build, to compile your project just by command line with simple commands, okay? Uh, only using one tool. Let's let's speak about it uh, uh, a, bit, uh, a bit later, okay? So at the end, we are here just to bring C++ plus plus powerful powerful tools and uh, to offer them for free okay because we are strictly committed to the open source community okay good very good so uh, let's start talking about hook and we will start just uh, talking about the design principles okay uh, it is a very important thing because we didn't start we, we didn't start writing hook uh, before uh, doing a, a very in-depth analysis of what we need and how we are going to build it, okay? So let us start. High performance, uh, for us, is, is, is the Rosetta key, right? High performance. Our library must perform in a very, 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 very high level. We don't want for just another library. That's not the, that's not the question for us. We are not in, in this in this way. We need for high performance library and things that, that we did uh, in order to get uh, this high performance library is to use what the language, what C++ has to offer. C++ has to offer extremely, extremely uh, high performance uh, syntactical ways in order to make your code really fast, okay? So we just, uh, we have been using and we are using, currently using template based abstractions uh, so everyone uh, in this talk knows that uh, there are no abstractions with zero cost, okay? So abstractions don't come for free. So you need to choose. That's easy, okay? What we did uh, while using template-based abstractions is, is to put in balance. So why? what's the most important thing for us? To run very fast or to compile? Extremely fast, extremely fast. For us, it's, it's an easy answer. I prefer to spend three more seconds compiling and running at a much, much higher performance. For me, runtime is the important thing. We are using multi-threaded and log-free design. Take care with that because when we are, when when I'm speaking about log-free, I'm not referring to atomic uh, to using atomics instead of mutexes and critical sections, semaphores, and things like that. No, it's a completely log-free uh, programming style. So we are not using any kind of synchronization mechanism. Okay, it's important. Cache-friendly data structures. That's easy. The processor uh, has a cache, and the cache is directly connected to the processor, so everything stored in the cache can be accessed much much faster than if we were if we uh, go to the uh, to the central memory okay so we are always working with very small cache pieces and cache friendly structures and also why not a uh, specific per per platform optimizations you cannot go extremely fast in any concrete or in a specific platform if you don't take in consideration uh, very low level specifications about this platform for example uh, in the case of the uh, the communication transports that we developed uh, that are used by the HTTP server, uh, we used on the, Linux, on the Linux side, we used uh, even spool mechanism, which is by far the most, uh, the most efficient way to handle sockets in Linux. And for Windows, uh, we use the input output completion ports, which is by far in Windows, the uh, the most performant way to handle with sockets and also scalable. So we are not using things like Celex and, and all that stuff. Okay, perfect. Let's go to the second one, low resources consumption. As you can see, this guy on the bicycle, uh, this this uh, this kind of vehicle is, uh, consumes uh, very few resources, only you have to use your legs you know, to make it run. So yes, uh, we also here have several uh, tools within the language and, and within the library. We created, for example, the auto buffers. Auto buffers are nothing more 
then uh, byte buffers then can move from to memory and file at any given threshold. I mean, you create an auto buffer and you set the threshold for the maximum memory usage to four kilobytes. And if you go higher than four kilobytes, your information will be automatically mapped from memory to file, okay? With no user intervention. That's a pretty important thing, a pretty nice thing to have in a system that you need to have everything controlled, talk, speaking about memory, okay? So you don't have to, to for the system to run wild and out of memory things while dealing with a lot of uh, static buffers and things like that, okay? Uh, we also have uh, several techniques applied like static data containers. So if you can create it static, do it. Because uh, either if, if information is created in a stack or as a global uh, variable, uh, it will be faster than using dynamic memory, okay? So we use, as, as long as it, it is possible, these kind of data structures, okay? No CPU polling, that's, that's very simple. Weak references, weak references is something that you are used to, you are very used to, to it. It's like, imagine when you are dealing with the standard library string class, when you are accessing this magic field, which is called C underscore STR, what you are getting back is a constant uh, chart pointer within the raw information currently contained into the string, okay? So you can use for read operation rather than copy, okay? Move semantics, it's clear, so we prefer to move rather than copying when possible, and also a specific per platform optimizations, okay? Also, it, it must be reliable. If not, uh, you don't get trust. If, if people don't trust you, people won't use your library. That's for sure, your product. So it's like being in a plane. I don't like planes. I hate flying. But I must admit that they are they are pretty, pretty reliable. So it's, it's very uncommon to see bad things happen within a plane, right? So they are built in a in an extremely, extremely reliable way. So that's that's something we are also print testing using gene testing, stress testing, uh, exception safe mechanisms in order not to get uh, corrupt for for any 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 error that can be caught, and of course using extensive use of uh, RAII in order to keep all the resources free when they are no longer used. Okay, perfect. Also easy to use. So for me. Especially for me, this is something really, really important because we are not only focused on experienced users or developers. We want this library to be used by almost everyone writing code, okay? So we dedicated a lot of time, uh, my college and I, trying to design uh, an extremely easy to access API. So almost everyone that is used to work with Node.js or even, even Golang language, RAS, whatever the modern language is that, that they are using, they will uh, find this library, this API extremely easy or very similar uh, to the thing that they are actually using in other languages, okay? So very important thing to have to keep in mind. Modern, so I, I think it's, it's, it's clear, right? So you, we need something modern, something that is up to date. We don't want to contribute to this uh, grown idea that C++ is a known language. No, this is not true. We all know about it. But we need a way to sell this, uh, this feeling and to sell this, uh, this feature uh, in some way. So let's help, let's try to help the community uh, by providing something that can be considered to be modern. And imagine that we are using, we are making an extensive use of all the constructions, all the uh, syntaxes that are uh, stored within the uh, C14 and 17 standards. And currently thinking about and adopting in some way, because we are still deciding how to do it, uh, things extremely important. For me, they are extremely important, like uh, C20 modules and concepts. Uh, concepts will make uh, our life much easier while dealing with uh, with template uh, parameters specifications. Okay, in order to get rid of all these, you know, uh, these uh, errors that one reach when 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 you are dealing with templates and you just use a wrong template argument. You you 
you get a lot of uh, nonsense information within the compiler virus stack, okay? Uh, perfect. The, the, the next thing is well planned. As I said before, uh, the hook design uh, has been has been a, a process. So we didn't start writing a single line of code of code before thinking about it. Okay, we just follow the. Uh, I think that most of you are, are aware of that. But there's a there's a, a methodology that is used in, within the almost the most of the uh, most important languages nowadays, which is solid. And, and I won't talk about solid, but we are strictly following this standard while uh, writing and designing the library. Cross-platform, that's, that's, that's something that uh, I, I could not consider. Uh, this is a personal feeling. I could not consider any library that is not available in almost all the most important platforms. For me, it's key. So we need to provide somehow a compatibility within all the most used platforms uh, on today. So we are mainly focused on three, on three ones, uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac, okay? We are also making our library compatible with either uh, x86 uh, and ARM uh, architectures. So you will be able to use, for example, a hook while developing code for, for Android devices or any other embedded, uh, embedded environment that you will find in the useful. And at the end, and as a final note, header only. This is extremely important for us. We, decide, we decided to make this library header only from the very beginning because we want get rid of we, we want to get rid of the, all the problems we faced in the past while dealing with different platform architectures, binary files, uh, ABA breaks and things like that. So when, when using hook, you, uh, you will only need the header files. That's all. Forget about it, CPP files, static or dynamic library files, per platform binaries, uh, ABI breaks. Uh, I think that a lot of people here and today have suffered about uh, application binary interface breaks. This happens uh, in a very different ways, but the most uh, usual ones are when we are using header files that are not synchronized with the binary that implements this header file. Okay, they are different. So at runtime, you get really strange errors. Another one is to use, for example, uh, binary files that has have been built in a different uh, platform tool set. And when you are trying to use them in a newer tool set, you start receiving a lot of problems because of the pre-compiled binaries. Okay, just think about the STL. The STL did it really well while designing the, the library because they decided Apart from the thing that they are using, uh, they, it was mainly focused on containers, which is a thing, it's a first candidate for, for, for templates thing. But apart from that, for algorithms and everything regarding that, you only need header files and it will compile in almost every single platform. That's the key. Okay, perfect. So let's talk a little bit about the essential pillars. The pillars are the most fundamental things that we, uh, we thought when trying to build this library. We define uh, three, uh, the three most important things when, uh, while creating this library. Uh, on one hand, we have, it has to be fast and efficient, okay? That's, that's, a, that's a, a main principle, fast and efficient, but also reliable. It has the same importance, okay? And to end, it must be easy to use. You could think, oh, is it to use really? Is 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 it a, is this a, an essential pillar? Yes, for us it's essential, and I will explain why. Let's see, uh, for example, if you have a library that is, is uh, either fast and efficient and reliable, you get something like this. Okay, so you have a, an extremely big and complicated thing that does a lot of very cool features. So, and and it does. Uh, very high speed and doesn't have uh, any kind of bags. Uh, uh, it's perfect, but there's uh, only one guy or two guys uh, uh, in a company that are able to use them because it requires a lot of expertise, okay? Let's see the other case. You have something this fast and efficient and it's easy to use, but it's not reliable. 
you will something like this okay so it's a uh, it's something that can be can, can run fast okay can be efficient it's very easy to use you only have to go inside and just put in in in, in running and fly but it's not reliable so you don't trust it if you don't trust it you won't use it that's key, okay and at the final uh, the final case let's talk about something that is easy to use and reliable but it's not fast and efficient you will get something like this okay uh, like the big the big uh, country car uh, you can you can use it. it it won't fail it's very it's extremely reliable and also it's extremely easy to use but it's not fast neither efficient so why we should be using so for us the three essential pillars are equally important and we are extremely focused on that okay cool let's see some target markets so if you're coming from companies that are thinking uh, if it if, if it if something that hook offers to you fits on your company uh, uh, needed so something like that let's see how how can we fit Hook within the target markets? So it's especially oriented to distributed and edge computing solutions, okay? It's also microservices-based architectures. You can use uh, all the features that we are adding in an incremental way are especially oriented to all these target markets. Also the IoT, Internet of Things, is a very important thing nowadays. And embedded devices in general, okay, can benefit a lot from this library because it's a, it has been designed to consume very, very, very uh, low resources, okay? Information providers, REST API servers, uh, and today, mostly 80 or 90% of the, of the communication between uh, APIs are done through REST API servers. So why not have something really good, something fast and easy to configure to handle thousands of connections, hundreds of thousands of requests per second? Data processing systems, uh, like for example, log analysis software can benefit a lot from, from features offered by, by Hook also. Infrastructure monitoring systems also, because we are very, very, very uh, committed to, to the thing to abstract the way the developer can access hardware facilities, as, we, as I will explain a little bit later, okay? And in just to summarize, any other solution needed for a fast, reliable, and easy to use C++ library providing for a comprehensive set of high performance primitives. Okay, so you can imagine a lot of target markets can be can be uh, can be fit in this in this library. Modules. This is a very important thing. What what's what's the thing? What are we going to include? Uh, within Hook in the next months or next years, because we are we are uh, releasing on today the version uh, 0.1, which includes, as I will say a little bit later, a set of modules. But uh, we will be adding a lot of a lot of them in the near future. So let's start. We we will include a complete, a full uh, HTTP server client, and also including some additional REST module. Okay. Also, that data formats and colors and decoders. You know, JSON. They in order to manipulate JSONs, uh, so uh, this is a pretty, pretty straightforward to to see. Ultra fast communication transports, not only sockets but also shared memory base, and whatever all the transport that uh, we consider that it's important, or or, or somewhere, uh, somewhere, someone asking us in order to implement this because it's widely used. Okay, right now we are only thinking about the sockets and shared memory. But maybe in the future, we will extend these this ultra fast communication transports. Concurrency. This is, uh, this is key for us, concurrency. Uh, we are working on an extremely efficient thread pool and also in a brand new library that will allow you to, to deal with uh, generic tasks. A task will be just some piece of code that you want to execute, but uh, you don't want to be uh, worried about where this task will be executed. Uh, let's see in a, in a pretty straightforward some example. Just imagine that you have some kind of code, a piece of code that you need to execute, okay? And imagine that you uh, want to execute this code, but uh, you don't mind if this, code is, if this code is executed within the same thread that you created the task. A different thread, a different and, dedica and dedicated thread within your process, a thread a pool which is included in your process or in another process so imagine that this uh, this is like hey i want to create this task it will get executed 
I don't mind when or where, but I will get the response back as soon as this task is completed. Okay, so this way of abstraction is what we are working right now with this library. Apart from that, we have the system library, which we will offer very, very useful mechanisms in order to inspect file systems uh, in Linux, Windows, or Mac, and whatever the, the platform they support, and, and also to, pro to, to have some kind of uh, hardware information providers. You know, we, we need a standardized way uh, to get information from the underlying hardware, like the CPU, the number of CPUs, the memory installed, et cetera, et cetera, okay? The console, the console is another very important product uh, module that we are working uh, right now in, in Hook. And it's just to provide for an API to build uh, console-based applications, but just in a REST way. That looks, I know that it looks really, at the very first, it looks a bit strange, a bit weird, but imagine just if, if you have ever deal with uh, REST services, when you are just um, assigning roots to, to code, to functions, imagine that you can apply the same uh, concept to the console application. So you, at the end, you have a console application that have a list of commands, and you can add uh, each command uh, using uh, a REST way so you can provide for the for the for the concrete execution of this of this command. Let's see this in a, in the demonstration. I will give you some information about controllers and things like that, so we can we can have an idea. And finally, Boo. Boo is one of is a state of the art thing that we are planning to to release the next year. And it's just uh, imagine like uh, it's a graphical user interface library. Uh, that will use H plain HTML language uh, to build the interface. So at the end, you don't have to learn nothing new in order to uh, build user interfaces. Okay, perfect. So let's see a very simple example. Okay, so uh, let's see we have an HTTP client and an HTTP server. This is regarding why it's so important to design a good API. Okay, uh, so this is a pretty, a pretty, pretty, pretty simple example. So we are a HTTP client. We send a request uh, to the full bar uh, URI, and then the, the server responds back with hello world. Pretty simple. It's, it's a straightforward sample, right? So let's see uh, how, uh, how uh, can it be implemented using uh, current library. I don't give, I will not give the name of the library, of course, but I must say that it's a, it's a widely reputated and good and very good open source uh, C++ HTTP library. It has 60, uh, it has six uh, key stars on GitHub and there's a lot of people uh, actively using it, okay? Uh, the following code is the code that the creators of the library uh, used in order to perform uh, the example the example before, okay? This code has not been created by me. It's, it's something that I grabbed from its own repository. Okay, so in order to do the hello world stuff that we saw, uh, within this library, you had to create a, a class which they call server. And as you can see here, let me just use the laser pointer. You see here that in the constructor, they are creating some workers that at the end are threads, okay? So they are just explicitly uh, working with the concurrency primitives, okay? They are not abstracting for the concurrency. The concurrency is not provided by default. You have to deal with that. Uh, after that, every, every worker uh, will call a function named worker uh, within the thread number, okay? So did this continue? To this code, this is the function name worker. Okay, it receives the thread number, it does some things, and just here is the, uh, the really important thing. After doing all of this code, you have here how uh, need to register this root to execute this code. So at the end, we are using, we are setting a callback here uh, with incoming connection and a request and response, and you just was. You just follow the, the standard and use the add header, no copy, blah, blah, blah stuff in order to set the content, the hello world content. Uh, after that, they have uh, some kind of a timer, uh, which is a loop, uh, it's an event based loop in order to keep it running until a signal is received, right? It's something that you must do in explicit way uh, to handle concurrency. 
And at the end, we reach the end of the code of this library, which is the main file. At the end, this is pretty simple. It's just creating the server, setting up a loop, an event loop using its own library, and waiting for the for the signal to be received in order to, to exit from the from the code. All these three pages are for dealing with this scenario, right? Just receiving a request and sending a response. That's all. There's nothing more than that, okay? Let's see how can we do it using uh, hook HTTP server. Exactly the same example. That's all, okay? That's all you need in order to do the same than before. So we are abstracting the user from the concurrency models and every every any other stuff that it's not uh, that it's not important uh, if you don't care it. The first motivation is if you don't care, you don't have to use it, okay? So look at that. Uh, we are just creating our server using the builder that we already provide. And the, the next two things is to register the root with the, with, the, with the Lambda function that will handle this routing mechanism and just set in the headers and write the body. And after that, we start our server. That's all. You don't have to do anything else. With this snip, this snippet is doing exactly the same than the three pages before. Okay, so that's that's because designing an API is so important. Okay, let's see let's see a few numbers about how fast it is, is it. We are these these numbers are, are about are all about the HTTP server, which is the most important or the main module that is is included into the first release of the hook library on today. We are releasing in, releasing it on today, keep it in mind. And basically we just compared uh, the, its performance against uh, one of the world fastest, fastest libraries that are available uh, on today. They, uh, we, we based on GitHub reputation and taking power framework benchmark results. And we choose uh, four of them. Uh, two of them uh, are Golang based, and the other ones are Rust based uh, libraries. Okay, so fast HTTP, Go HTTP, Hyper, and Actix Web. Okay, this is the machine specs. The machine specs that the, ma the, the, the machine has, uh, in which we run the results. So it's, it's a pretty high end machine. So it's it's nice. And also the software. So the software is just an Ubuntu Linux distribution, just using the WRK uh, tool, which is a very high performance uh, networking uh, benchmarking tool. And this is the command. We just use a concurrency of 256 clients uh, and 32 threads while dealing with that on the client and reaching an amount of 1 million of requests. Okay, let's see. So memory usage over time. So if you find for Q, which is the blue one, you will see that the lower, the lower is the better. So we are performing, we are using extremely low number of resources. Here, hyper is very near from us, but they are they are above, above from, from us. So they are using slightly more memory than our solution is using. And the other hand, the, the go default solution was using uh, almost uh, 50 times the memory that uh, uh, hook hook was using while performing the tests, okay? So uh, another one, the, the blue one is, an, uh, is our library. So let's see the CPU usage over time. Uh, let's see how our our library hook, this is a, this is a mis, uh, misstatement. So it's hook, not cool. And the blue side, you see that we used during over time 100% of the CPU resources in order to get the dot jam, okay? Uh, just uh, after us were uh, Actix Web and Fast HTTP using a quite good CPU numbers. I have to admit they are they are performing really well, but not as stable as Hook. Okay, look at this line. This is in a straight line using uh, almost all the resources. Let's see the total number of processed requests. Okay, so here Hook is is always uh, at top. We are using we are just um, uh, processing uh, more than uh, 70 uh, million number of processes or requests. And the second one is Actix Web, which can handle a bit more of uh, 60 million requests. 
Go, uh, the default implementation on, by Google, uh, the GoLang HTTP server is getting the worst results here. Request processed per second. So we see that hook is uh, one more time, the, the first one. It's handling more than uh, 600,000 requests per second. And the second one is Actic, Actix Web, which is processing uh, a bit more than uh, 500,000 requests per second. So these results, uh, you can find the results, the benchmarking results, the numbers, everything within our GitHub repository. And you can also reproduce any test that you want using the, the code that we provide, okay? So let's see a, a quick uh, quick see at the, at the schedule uh, and see how it's coming. So on today we are releasing the HTTP 1.1 REST server. Also the JSON encoder decoder and the auto buffer, buffer thing, okay? This is what we are releasing on today. Uh, the next thing that is coming this summer is uh, an HTTP REST client, okay? A basic uh, crypto functionality in order to provide for some methods of encryption, uh, secure HTTP, HTTPS, the console module to build up uh, console applications, concurrency, the, the, the stuff I, I, I talked a little bit earlier about the uh, uh, abstract task execution and everything regarding that. And also we will add a new uh, encoder uh, based on Jamal uh, for you to, to use it on your Android. In fall of, uh, of this year, we will be adding HTTP2 uh, support, also WebSockets. We will add the system, a module, which is the thing I told before, is the abstraction from the hardware in order to get information from the file system, from the hardware and things like that. And also we'll add some additional crypto functions, okay? So for you to use within the secure HTTP, for example. And the next year we will be releasing the, uh, the book, the graphical user interface library, which is something quite complex and we are currently only designing design stage uh, about this thing. Okay. So let's go, let's go quicker because I want to, to spend some time writing code. Let's talk about Ku, just a little bit about Ku. Ku is the thing that I, I mentioned at the very beginning, at the very first beginning of, the, of this talk. And it's just like a command line tool that will be used in order to build, to manage package dependencies within C++ projects, to publish your own libraries to any any uh, cloud repository, like for example, uh, JFrog and things like that. So let's see the main features of Ku. okay? The first one is to handle application and library projects. So you have an application or a library and you want to fully handle it, completely handle it using Ku as a command line tool, okay? So you can also manage dependencies. You can add dependencies, install them locally to use them, remove from your project, update dependencies from the cloud. So if, for example, if we are using uh, a dependency and they they upload a new version, every time you get, uh, you execute an update command, you will get the newer version of this library. Uh, also, we would like, or we are trying to be, we, we want to, to to support a fully uh, complete building process to your to your code. So at the end is the idea of having one tool, having one tool to rule them all. I mean, only with Ku and with the compilers correctly installed within your system, you will be able not only to manage dependencies and handle your projects and things like that, but also building it uh, using the Ku engine uh, that will not make use of any external make, uh, CMake, and things like that, okay? Publish your code. So if you are a library creator, you will you will like to, once you are just working on your library, you will like to have a repository where you can upload your new versions and things like that. So you can publish your library so every every other developers can just grab your code from the, from the cloud. Also, for example, generate Doxy and Sphinx-based based documentation using command line tool. Uh, Ku will will um, will provide you will provide the developers for some commands in order to generate, generate uh, documentation based on, on this system. And many 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 more things to come. But let's keep it uh, let's keep it apart. Okay, let's uh, let's wait for it because we are working on, on that right now. Uh, I will I will do a short demo right now with the current version of Ku. 
Okay, okay. So let's let's just do some demo stuff. Okay, I will I will jump to the Visual Studio. I hope that everyone uh, can see the screen and and the letters and everything. So I will just uh, play a little bit around with the HTTP server, which is the main uh, module being released on today. I mean, um, I'm not uh, very uh, I'm not very interested for you to 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 attend this because this is an HTTP example. No, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is our philosophy, okay? Because the way we write code for the HTTP server that you're going to see right now is the same way that we will apply to every single other module within Hook. That's because this kind of test is, is very important. So let's start just yes, by including including the, uh, the needed uh, file. So I will just include the builder, the server builder here. And we will be using just in order to, to get rid of all these stuff. Let's just use all the, the the name spacing here. Okay, that's fine. And let's create our main our main function. It will be pretty simple. Okay, so we don't get it, it, it won't get very complicated. Let's start by adding exception management here. And in case of any uh, bad error, just return minus one. Okay, perfect. That's because I was speaking uh, before, because we are really committed to the uh, exception safe design. That's because we are in the try and catch thing. So uh, let's let's just create let's just create our server, and it's extremely it's pretty pretty simple. Okay, the only thing that we need to use is our server builder, and this is a, using a builder pattern. So you can use, for example, you can set here any parameter that you are interested in in order to change it from the defaults. You can set the number of workers, which is the number of threads. This is the concurrency level of the server. For this example, we will keep it very simple and just, uh, just build it with all the default parameters, right? So at the end, this is how we create our server. Cool, that's great. The other thing, the next thing that we need to, to do is for a web uh, for a http server we need to say hey we want to handle this route okay and we want to handle this route using this lambda function okay at the end what our our what our system is receiving is just uh this lambda function is receiving the request itself and the response Nothing more than that. Okay, so we are ready. We are ready to write our our root code. Uh, with this demo, we are going to keep it extremely simple. Okay, so let's just do something like that. We have in within the response, we have the body, and we can directly write to to the body. For example, let's say that we want to write this thing to the body, and after that, the only thing that we need to do is just say, hey, okay. Let's uh, apart from the body, let's send an okay response so the user can the user can get a, 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 the response here. Okay, that's all. We have our new handler. The next thing is to start the server, right? So we have uh, we are using our the server object and we start it using 8080 port, which is the default HTTP port for for applications. And after that, we will just wait for for this. For these demo proposals, we will just wait for the return key from the user in order to stop it running. Okay, so we build it. And if I didn't uh, do anything wrong, we should be getting on it. Okay, so it's up and running with the root hello. Okay, so if we execute our server in my local host and I go to the, uh, to the Chrome uh, page, if I execute the, if I use the local host with 8080 and hello root, we will say here our code. That's okay, pretty good. It's what we will expect from this code. Let's stop it and let's make some changes. Imagine that you want to add some kind of authorization mechanism. This is something that gets, that's a little bit tricky and complicated within the current HTTP server libraries in the market because you have to use our own mechanism. So you can, you have to import, uh, external middleware in order to add it. But this is not the case of, of, of this library of hook. So let me see. We are going to include here. Well, we don't need it instead. We are, we are going to create the following thing, okay? So we have a set 
of already built in authorization modules. Let's see that we want to use uh, an AP key, okay? We will call it Mayas. But we are creating here, we are using a built in uh, authorization mechanism. And this is the pretty thing, the cool thing here. We create it, okay? And after that, the only thing that we have to do in order to enable its use within our newly created server is to do this. We are going to use our auth object to inject it through the Lambda function. So at the end, what we are doing here, we are doing here a hey, execute this code, but after the authorization mechanism has enabled it. That's all, okay? So uh, if I try to run, for example, again, our server, now it's using authorization. So the thing that we are going to get here, hopefully, yes, it's an HTTP 403 because we don't have access to it, okay? Because now it's working as with an authorization method. We have something much cooler here because we are working in this handle function. We handle every single method within the HTTP methods, get, put, post, and everything. But we can do things like this, like this, okay? So if we put get over there, now we only are registering um, routes. Uh, the hello root will only be affected by the get method. So for example, if we do a post to this root, we will, we will get a 404 error because it doesn't exist, okay? Oh, so, okay, so let's just enable somehow to go to through this through this uh, endpoint. So let's add uh, a valid user token. So at this point, we are just filling up our AP, AP key uh, auth module, and we are adding this token in order for the library to check uh, the incoming request again against this token. So let's see an example. I will use Postman for these purposes because it's much better. Okay. So here we have the URL, which is pointing to the 8080 and hello thing. We are not using any kind of authorization. So if we try to send the information, we will get a 403 forbidden message. So if we change authorization to API key and set the API key value to hook, which is the one that has been registered in our code, we should see that the information is coming back with no problem. Uh, and that's all. So it is extremely straightforward and simple to handle with, with roots and with things like uh, adding uh, authorization mechanisms, okay? Uh, I will stop here because I run out of time, I think. Uh, so we will stop. Uh, you can see um, a lot of examples in the, in the slide that I will share right now, just before the, the questions. So here you have the officially released uh, GitHub URL of hook. There you can find a lot of documentation, also a lot of examples. So you will not be, al you will not feel alone while uh, uh, playing with Kubica hook and things like that, because we are extremely committed uh, to offer examples to, to the users, okay, to the developers. If you have any other questions, you can just write to me to support uh, at kubica.com. O -R -G, and we will answer as, as soon as possible. But um, I will also like to finally to, 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 to say thank you to both Alessandro and Marco uh, in order for me to, to have the opportunity to share this, this pretty cool thing that we have been working and we are currently working with the Italian C++ community. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here on today and to, and to show our, our things. So uh, I will just stop sharing my screen so I can, if you have any questions uh, right now, it's time for, for, the, for the questions and answer things. So I will be very happy to, to answer whatever you may, you may require from me.
Well, well, there's a question about how will Boo call C++ code, code from HTML? That's a pretty good question, and it's something that we are still uh, working on that. At the end, we are working on uh, what we call uh, running uh, runtime injected code snippets. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing that uh, it's uh, based on the cool architecture, which at the end is the thing that will build in runtime code that is being generated. But yes, it's some kind of, of, of a hook that we do between the HTML and the C++ code. It's, it's also something similar of the, if you have ever used the Qt, uh, the QML language, it's something similar, but a little bit different in the way of, of use. Well, very good question. Uh, we did a very, very good job, I think. So I, I will, I will, um, I will say that uh, a very good job uh, with the auto buffers, but the auto buffers are not related to strings. We are considering right now to provide for a fast uh, or high performance uh, string based on the auto buffer stuff. So the answer is right now we don't have anything regarding the strings. But we will take into account in the in the near future for for in order to be easy to replace the standard uh, STL string within the with the new uh, the new one. Absolutely, absolutely. We are looking for contributors and for people joining us for building this team because uh, now we are only two active developers, but we are waiting for a lot of people to contribute the project and to make it really, really big because this is only the beginning. Uh, we, we are expecting to grow uh, a lot during the next months. So feel free to join us on GitHub to start contributing within the library. We are, we, we are really happy to 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 have uh, helping hands while while contributing to this library, absolutely yes. Okay, so no more questions so far. So I would like to to thank you all. Uh, thank you all guys for attending. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here, as as I said before, and hope you enjoyed and liked the uh, the stuff I, I introduced to you. Thank you and bye bye.